Hey guys, so this is an intro to antiderivatives, differential equations, and indefinite integrals, and let's just get started. So these three things, antiderivatives, differential equations, and indefinite integrals, they are all very similar in idea, and so I think sometimes that gets confusing for people. So where I want to start is just telling you the definitions of these things and just some like finer points to note. So let's start with an antiderivative. So a function f is an antiderivative of f if f prime of x equals f of x for all x on some interval i. Okay, so this is kind of what it sounds like. If you have a derivative, then it's the idea of going backwards on that derivative and figuring out what the original function had to be. And I'll show you an example of this in a moment. But this is just, so the, the general term here is antiderivative, and now this is going to get used over and over. Now, one other note I want to make. So the most general form of an antiderivative, you, you figure out kind of what that original function was that you may have started with, and then you write a plus c at the end where c is a constant. So that is something that you really want to get in the habit of when you're working with the idea of just a general antiderivative. Now, connected to this is the idea of an indefinite integral. So indefinite integrals, this is the collection of all antiderivatives of f. This is the big notation that you want to remember here. So this sign here, this is the integral sign, and then you've always got this dx here, and then the function. So basically when you see this, you are finding the antiderivative, but now we say, we, we change our language and we call this the indefinite integral of f with respect to x. It's very important that you have all of these parts here. I think any calculus teacher will probably dock you if you, if you don't. Part of the reason why is so this dx is telling you what you want to take the, the um, integral with respect to. And you can think of the integral also again as the antiderivative. So these words kind of will get used interchangeably, but probably most often you'll hear the word integral um, when you start really moving in calculus. So a few other things. This sign here, this is what's called the integral sign. Now your f is the integrand, and then whatever uh, you've got here, this is your variable of integration. So usually when you're in Calc 1, this is pretty straightforward, but you want to get in the habit of this because if you're going on to a class like Calc 3, then you start getting x's and y's and z's, and so then you've got to start differentiating, so that's why we have this here. So just heads up on that. Okay, so the last thing I want to just tell you about is a differential equation. So differential equations, this is the idea of finding the antiderivative for f of x. And we're going to call that antiderivative. Now we call it y of x. Um, so that dy dx equals that, that um, antiderivative. So this is these are all very, very similar ideas. And notice the word antiderivative is used in these last two um, definitions or these, these last two ideas of integrals and differential equations. So a lot of times people get confused as to what they are. They're, they're very, very similar things with just slight tweaks in how you think about them. So I'm going to show you some examples of how this works. So just a few other things I want to mention about differential equations and some terminology that's specific to them. So we have what's called the general solution. And so this looks exactly like what I just told you for the antiderivative, right? So the general solution really does look like the antiderivative. But also with differential equations, there's another concept. There's this thing called an initial condition. And if you have that, then you can find the particular solution. So you have general solution and particular solution. I'm going to show you an example of what these both look like, just so that you, you have a better sense of this. Okay, so this is kind of all the ideas here. So all of these things are very, very connected. And hey, if you found that helpful so far, maybe consider giving my video a like or subscribing to my channel. That really helps me put more free math on the internet. So I, I super appreciate that support. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to compare how these problems might be stated. And I'm going to use a really basic example just to help you kind of get the, the gist of this. So let's start with um, this first one. So you might be told just to find the antiderivative for the function. So here you are, you are given the antiderivative. So like I said, the antiderivative is almost this idea of going backwards. So what, what function, if you took the derivative of it, would you get to 2x? Well, that would be a function of the form x squared. And I'll use my, my white color here, so x squared. Now, depending on the notation, so sometimes you might use like a capital F of x to indicate, you know, that this is the, the original function that you're starting with. But remember, the general form of these always has to have the plus c. And if you think about this, this makes sense, right? Because if you take the derivative of any constant, this just equals zero. So if I were to take then the, the derivative of this whole thing, so you can check this very quickly, 
by doing f prime of x, what does this equal? This just equals 2x, so we're good to go. So this is kind of what you're trying to do here, is you're, you're unraveling these and going really backwards, that idea of the antiderivative. I think that's a really good description of exactly what we're doing. We're, we're really going backwards on this. Okay, so here's what you do for an antiderivative. Now let me show you what, it, what do you do when you find the indefinite integral. This is really the same question here. Um, so now instead of just telling you to find the, the antiderivative, this is almost more efficient notation, and you do the, literally the same thing. So this is just going to equal x squared plus c, literally the same answer, okay? Um, just a slightly different way of asking the same question. And now let's look at the general solution. So now here I've been given a differential equation. If I'm just being asked to find the general solution, so this dy, this is going to be what I named the function this time. So this will be y of x equals x squared plus c. So it's just a slightly different way of looking at all the same things. Now here's the other twist that can come up with the differential equation. Instead of being asked to find the general solution, I could just say solve the initial value problem. And so now what's baked in here, there's, there's really two parts. So first, you find the general solution. So in this case, that would be my y of x equals x squared plus c. That's the first part. Next, you find the particular solution. So if you're wondering how do I do that, well that's why you need this initial value condition. So basically now I can plug this into this function, right? So I know that y of zero, this would now be zero squared plus c equals seven. And now you can see just from looking at this, so the zero drops everything out, so c just equals seven. Now you're not done, you have to actually state the particular solution. So therefore my particular solution would be y of x equals x squared plus seven. And that would be how you would finish that. So that's that's kind of the little twist that can come up with a, um, a differential equation. Okay, so now what I wanna show you are just a list of formulas, and you might wanna pause the video to write these down. This can be a really handy guide when you're working on this. So here I have just all of the antiderivative formulas. So like I said, if you need to pause the video and write them down, go for it. So here's the first list. I've, I've got a long list of these. Here's the next list. Again, pause if you need it. Here's the next list. And then finally, here's this last list. So you're gonna find when you're working with antiderivatives that you start getting a little bit confused. Um, so once you have things like differentials and now you're gonna start integrating, it just it starts to get a little bit um, crazy. One that really throws people off all the time, I wanna show you, it's going with sine and cosine. So remember, if I were to take the derivative of sine, the derivative of sine is positive cosine. However, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine because if you take the derivative of cosine, it would be negative sine. And if you need this to end up positive, then you need to have a negative here. So I think having this list in front of you when you're trying problems is very, very helpful. Um, and it's totally normal to, to mess up those signs. Everybody does it. So highly recommend just having like a nice list for you to reference while you're going through everything. Now in my other videos, I have plenty of examples. So if you just wanna see examples of antiderivatives or integrals or differential equations, I've got tons of links to those in the description below. But that's kind of the, the general overview of this. So thanks for watching guys. Consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel. Again, that really helps me and hopefully I'll see you in some example videos.